Youngest daughter, Eliza, who's 14, every night before she's gone to bed, now this is a four-year practice, every day has not missed a day, she writes down 14 things that she's grateful for every day. So now think about what that says to you for the next day, because now you have to be in tune as to what you're being grateful for. The other thing she does, which is, I think, it's the cutest, she'll be embarrassed if I ever say this, so I'm going to say it, she has a happiness clicker, happy thoughts clicker. So if you go by her room at night, you'll hear it. click, 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 and it just warms my heart to hear someone who's actually having happy thoughts and rewarding herself for the happy thoughts. Is that beautiful? The more valid reasons you have to accomplish a dream, the higher the odds are that you will. Now that's a powerful, powerful. thesis. First question is, is your dream really your dream? And that's where we start, Ed. Because can I tell you something? If your dream isn't really your dream, ain't going to work. If it, and, 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 and I tell people Gosh. in this book, hey, the first dream we have isn't our dream. Yes. It's our parents' dream. So My mom and dad, when I was seven, they thought I was going to be a musician. And so mm. I've taken piano mm. lessons from the seven <laughs> years old to about 13. I wasn't any good at it. It wasn't piano. your gift in this. It wasn't my gift. But they're so <laughs> proud. They go to my recitals. I'm living their dream. I'm, yes. I'm playing the piano. I can't play the piano. I'm not very good at it. I'm not gifted. But it doesn't matter. I'm living their dream. Yeah. So what I tell people all the time is we start off our life living someone else's dream, probably our parents. So what happens is a lot of people as adults, they never switch. So true. And so they're still living someone else's dream. Story of the Chinese farmer, you ever seen that? No. Where, so he loses his horse and everybody in the town comes over and they say, oh, well, that's, that's terrible. And he's like, um, maybe. And then the next day, seven wild horses come back and they all come over and they say, oh, well, that's great. And he says, well, maybe. And the next day, his kid has taken out one of the wild horses and breaks his leg. And the whole town comes over and they say, oh, that's terrible now, isn't it? He says, maybe. And the next day, the conscription officers come over and they're, you know, taking people into the military to go fight. And they pass by his son because he's got a broken leg. And the whole town comes over and they say, you know, and they say, oh, that's great now, isn't it? He says, maybe. And the point of it is that you, you never really know if something is bad or good because you don't know how that's going to affect the rest of your life. Life isn't margaritas on a beach in, in Jamaica. That happens now and then. Those are exceptions. Your life is how your wife greets you at the door when you come home every day. Because that's like 10 minutes a day. Your life is how you treat each other over the breakfast table. Because that's an hour and a half or an hour every single day. You get those mundane things right, those things you do every day. You concentrate on them and you make them pristine. It's like you got 80% of your life put together. These little things that are right in front of us, they're not little, that's the first thing. They are not little, and they're hard to set right. And if you set them right, it has a rippling effect, and, and fast too, way faster than people think. I think that a lot of people struggle in their 20s, particularly in this day and age, because of the curse of comparison, and because we live in a culture of curated perfection, where you're constantly comparing yourself to your peers' filtered appearance on Instagram, mm -hmm. and the life that they seem to be living. So we're comparing our insides with everyone else's projection of their outsides. I think a lot of us fall into the trap, and I did too, of believing that we had to have our life sorted out by then. And actually, your 20s are a decade of transition, of discovering who you are, and the the older you get, my experience has been, the more you know yourself and the more you know what you want to do and that's where success lies. One in eight million, the odds of you winning the national lottery, but you still buy the ticket. One in 3.7 million, the odds of you being in a plane crash, but you still take the flight. One in 4,000, the odds of you being in a car crash, but we still drive. One in 400 trillion. The odds of you actually existing. And you still sit here and question whether your life is worth living. Or whether you're good enough for people. And you continue to sit there and do things that make you unhappy. <laughs> it's not time to go. It's time to start living. Because you being born is an absolute blessing. And it's time we start taking advantage of the time that we have on this earth. You got this. Sometimes it takes certain things falling apart for better things to fall into place. Sometimes it takes losing what you're settling for to remind you of what you truly deserve. 
Sometimes it takes the most uncomfortable paths to lead your life to the most beautiful place. I know it's hard, but you'll never see the purpose of the storm until you see the growth it produced. You'll never see the purpose of someone leaving your life until you see what's best for your life. I want you to understand this and believe this, Andy. Your current situation is not your final destination. This storm will eventually run out of rain. This struggle that's seeming like it's lasting forever will eventually run out of pain. This hurt you will turn into the greatest you. When Russians, he said, when, when we look at Americans and British people, you know, American and British philosophy is all about the pursuit of happiness, right? It's even in the founding documents of the country, right? The pursuit, we want to be happy. And he said, you know, Russians, when we hear that, we just laugh. He said, children want to be happy. He said, you'll have no control over whether you're happy in your life. Very minor amount of control. He said, life is about meaning and the pursuit of meaning. And if you have meaning, that'll carry you through a shit ton of unhappiness, right? Or think about something as simple as going to the dentist, right? You go to the dentist, you've got a toothache, and you know that the dentist inflicts terrible pain on you, but that has meaning to you because you know it'll stop your tooth hurting, right? right? If you took away that framework of meaning, if I just put a drill into your face now, Patrick, that would not be a lovely, you know, that I went to the dentist and it helped. It would be a form of torture, right? So meaning can carry you through terrible forms of pain. As a friend, if I see you acting irresponsibly, it's my job and my duty to let you know that you're doing something that's self-sabotaging. You you engage in a self-sabotaging behavior. I'm guilty of this. I'm I'm the biggest self-sabotager there is. And whenever I engage in that type of behavior, it usually stems from something internal that I have going on. And a lot of times as a friend, we don't want to piss the person off and hurt them or so discord between us and them but you gotta tell them the truth listen it's not you i don't like i just don't like your behavior you know and i'm only telling you this out of a place of love care and concern